Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check out Cosmic Kaboom from Minion Games. This is for two to four players. Ages 13 plus will take about 30 minutes to play. And in Cosmic Kaboom, this is a flicking game where you're going to be flicking your spaceship all around the galaxy trying to collect resources in order to build a bomb and then whew, throw that bomb and hopefully destroy other people's planets. It's a light flicking game. Does it do stuff that's good though? That was a weird one. Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. All right, then. We're going to take a look at what you're to get inside of Cosmic Kaboom. So first and foremost, we have a handy-dandy rule sheet. It's about seven, eight pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. Very well done. Should have you up and running in no time at all. Big thumbs up on the rule booklet. Also, very simple game, so I can teach you how to play right now. So in Cosmic Kaboom, you are going to be flicking around your spaceship, trying to go to various different planets that will be producing various different resources. When you hit that planet, you're going to collect those resources, put them in your cargo hold, and then take them back to your planet. Once you have all four of the different resources, you will be able to turn them in and throw your bomb to try and destroy planets. What am I talking about? I'll show you the components, and then we'll get into the gameplay. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention this looks like it's a very crowded setup I have, and it is. I would recommend playing on a much larger space than this, personally, uh, but it's just for camera purposes. That's why everything is so close together. So, component-wise, each player is going to pick a color, and they're going to get a corresponding spaceship, a corresponding base, which will also mark one edge of, you know, outer space. So this right here would be the edge of the board. They're going to get a cargo hull, which is where they're going to be holding their four resource cubes, and you're going to get four resource cubes to start with of blue, green, red, and yellow. Uh, each player is then going to get two of these Cosmic Kaboom cards and pick one that they would like to keep. These will have really different special abilities that you will be able to utilize throughout the game. Most of them are one-time use, but we'll go over some of these a little bit later once you know exactly more about how the game is played. So, next what you're going to do is every player is going to have their three ships and they're going to be able to set these out one at a time. Now the thing to notice, excuse me, the three planets. The thing to notice about these planets are the dots. So one, two, and three dots. If it has more dots, that means it will gain you more points. So five points, four points for the two dot, and three points for the one dot. And you're not going to be destroying your own planets, hopefully. Other people will be trying to destroy your planets. So you kind of want to strategically think about where you're going to put your planets when you take turns placing them out like this. There's only a couple rules. Uh, they have to be, you know, inside of the game board, a.k.a. where the corners, a.k.a. the... Uh, the bases are and they also can't be like touching each other on top of each other or anything like that but for the most part there's not too many rules in where and why you place what you place so everybody should be ready to go now and it's going to start and you're going to go in order around the table clockwise and you're going to take turns flicking your spaceship with the goal of hitting other people's spaceships but oops before we do that we need to make sure we place out the resources because just hitting any old blue planet will not get you a blue resource. You have to hit the planet that has the blue gem on it. So at the beginning of the game, it's going to go to the one with one dot. So let's see, the green one would go over here towards one dot, the red one would go right here since it has one dot, and the yellow one would go here. So on your initial hit, you were trying to get to one of these spaces that has the gem. So let's just say I was able to do that, that would actually be out of bounds, which means I would be dead. Actually, I think that's still part. We're just going to say it's partially out of bounds. Uh, so now I would take the blue cube that I have in front of me and I would put it into my cargo hole like so. And that would be the end of my turn. So that would have been a pretty productive turn. Now, this, this uh, resource, though, goes from this blue planet to the next blue planet with two dots. So it's going to go to the one, to the two, to the three, back to the one, to the two, to the three, until they start getting destroyed, which I'll show you how that works later. Now, let's just say uh, red goes next, and they have an absolutely terrible flick, and they go, boom, like they do that, and they're out of bounds. So if you ever go out of bounds, that means your base is, da or your, um, your ship is damaged, so you have to go back to your base, and any cubes that you had in your cargo hull go away. So you definitely want to stay in bounds, but it's not always that easy, because other people can attempt to flick you out of bounds, so that is 
definitely an aspect of the game. So let's say it gets back to me, I go flick this way, and boom, I hit this yellow one right here. So I would get a yellow cube, put it in my cargo hold, and then the yellow would go to the yellow two spot. Now let's fast forward. Let's say that it is, uh, I have all four of mine. So boom, I have all four of my cubes right here. What I have the option to do is instead of flicking, I can say I'm going back to my base. And when I do that, I immediately go back to my base and I offload any of the cubes that I have in my cargo hole onto, onto my base, like so. And you can do this at any point. Like if you're worried that someone's going to try and knock you out of bounds, then you could for that turn just say, you know what, I'm just going to go back to my base and I'm just going to drop off the two cubes I have and then go back out. You can really do it however you want. Most people just tend to go for all four cubes and then come back. But, you know, it, it's completely up to you. And sometimes it is more strategic to go back to your base, for instance, say if I needed blue. But anywho, once it gets back to me next turn, I will be able to throw this bomb right here. There's a couple rules. Pretty much if you play like beer pong, you know, the elbows rule, you can't, you have to make sure you throw it before you get to the base. So if I threw it right there, that would not be a legal throw. So I'm going to throw it like this. And the goal is to try and get it on top of a planet. And if you do that, you destroy the planet. The planet is now gone. You're going to get those points at the end of the game. And that can, it's going to trigger the end of the game getting a little bit closer. So now that that red two planet is gone, when someone hits this red one planet, the resource would just go to the three. So now it's going to go back and forth from the one to the three. So what would have happened if I would have done this though, you may be asking. If I got red and yellow, well good for me, that's fantastic. I get both these planets and I just picked up a whopping nine points, which would definitely be fantastic. Now what would happen, for instance, if I did that and I completely whiffed and I missed? Well, no big deal. You don't have to spend your cubes. What happens is that's the end of your turn and when it gets back around to you, you, you try again. Also, you can land on your own planet and destroy your own planet. You don't get any points for it, so make sure you don't do it. But anywho, what you're going to do is everyone's going to be doing this until all of the colors of one particular planet are destroyed, like so, or until... Seven planets have been destroyed. Whichever one of those happens first will sing, will uh, end the game, and then you're going to tally up your points. So you're going to add these points right here. You will get two points for each planet that you still have out. So for instance, blue would get six points, yellow would get six points, green would get six points, red would get zero points. Whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. Now, let's talk about the special ability cards, which I alluded to a little bit earlier. So let's just show you a couple of them so you get a feel for them. Some of them have some wildly crazy powers. So fusion generators, you, as soon as you collect your fourth energy cube, you may immediately return your spaceship to your base and throw the space bomb. Normally, that would take you another turn. So that's a really cool one. Energy scanner, at the start of your turn, you may spend one energy cube to move one energy crystal to another planet of the same color. So that could be used to help you or potentially hurt someone else if they're about to win the game, maybe. Diplomacy, when you throw the space bomb, you may throw it from behind any player's base. Once during your turn, if your spaceship collides with another player's base, you may steal one energy cube of your choice from that base and place it in your cargo hole. So as you can see, and there's lots and lots and lots of these different cards, and since you're only going to be having at most eight that you'll even see at a game, and you're only going to really see two, there's lots of variability in how these cards work. But that in a nutshell is how Cosmic Kaboom is played. Alright then, Cosmic Kaboom from Minion Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, not going to be for everybody, for a couple different reasons. First, dexterity slash flicking game immediately going to turn off a lot of people. Now there is some more strategy on when you use your cards and how you set out your planets and some various other different things like that, but for the most part it is pure dexterity and pure flicking, so that's just not everybody's cup of tea. And another comment I have with this is if that someone is really good at dexterity or flicking, in particular the dexterity, they are going to have an advantage in the game, especially when it comes to throwing those bombs. If somebody's pretty accurate with how they can, you know, throw the bomb, they are going to have a much higher percentage chance of winning the game, especially if you're playing on a larger table. And I do like playing on a larger table and having like this big sprawling galaxy, but at the same time, since you have to throw the bomb from behind your base, it can be very difficult to hit uh, spaceships that are all the way, or excuse me, hit the planets that are all the way across the table. But that's still mostly a nitpick, I will say, because, you know, it's such a short game that it didn't really bug me. And you can kind of team up on that person a little bit with your cards and whatnot. But moving forward. Uh, another con, minor con I have of the game, is that I wish 
maybe you got more cards or there was another way to earn cards maybe if you hit maybe there were special planets that you hit the bomb with them maybe instead of getting a resource or getting points you earned a card and a victory point or something like that i don't know just something different to the game because i really enjoy the cards and i think they're really cool even though i don't think they're completely balanced and that's another con i suppose uh, but you only get two per game and you only pick one per game which means you're gonna have a lot of leftover cards so you know I just wish there was another way to implement the cards into the game because the cards are great and I really like the addition of the cards into the game. Any other cons that I have with the game? No, not really. Moving on to the pros, I really enjoy Cosmic Kaboom. Highly recommend Cosmic Kaboom. And this is going to be on my shelf for as long as I have a shelf. There's a lot of different reasons why. So first and foremost, if you're looking at this as a family game, yes, 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 yes. Oh God, yes. Pull this trigger on this one. It is so much fun as long as you have, you know, four people or less. So easy recommendation. It says ages 13 plus. Completely ignore that. I played it with a seven-year-old. They had a blast. I think I could probably teach this to my four-year-old as well, as long as I was holding his hand throughout the game. He might get frustrated with the flicking and whatnot, but still, oh, so much fun in a family game setting. Lightweight filler game. Yes, but I don't know how often I would go to it. Just because, you know, I don't know. It's just... I don't normally get too many dexterity games to the table on game nights unless I have to review them. But if you do, and if your game group does like lightweight filler or does like dexterity games, this is definitely one I can recommend. It is a lightweight filler. It is very easy to learn. It is very easy to teach. The rules are well written, uh, and I think people will get a kick out of trying the cards and flicking and moving around the table and doing all different stuff like that. So I can recommend it for that. Gateway game crowd, yes, absolutely. Nothing in this game is going to go over people's heads for the most part. Maybe some of the terminology on the cards, like what's the command hole, what's the base, different things like that. But still, gateway game crowd, yes, absolutely. Uh, if you're looking at this as like a couples game, maybe you have a couple over every every week or so, every two weeks or something like that. This would be a really fun game to set out on like a coffee table or a game table. There's just, this is a chameleon game. I don't see this game falling flat with too many people as long as you go into it knowing that it's a dexterity game and a flicking game uh, built from the ground up. And as long as you're not like, oh, but this one had so much more strategy. As long as you go into it, then yeah, there's some strategy, but it's still minor strategy. I can easily recommend Cosmic Kaboom. Uh, and I'm not hearing much about this game, which is really disappointing because I think it packs a lot of fun in a relatively small box. I like the artwork, I like the flicking, I like the dexterity, I like the cards, I like everything about this game. I hope in the future they come out with even more things, more planets, you know, maybe some, some third-party planets will do some crazy things, more cards, different ways to earn cards. A six-player variant for if you have a big enough table like I do where you can set it up, or maybe even some crazy weird setup where our team version of the game, that'd be great too. Anything like that, I, I hope that this is a, not a one-off game, and I hope there's more in the future. Unfortunately, probably will be a one-off, just because. But still, Cosmic Kaboom, really enjoy this one. Do not let this one slip off your radar. A lot of fun. Cosmic Kaboom, Minion Games, highly recommended. If you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. And let me know, Flicking Games, are you in or are you um, out? In or yay or nay i guess that's what i'm trying to say here for me personally you know i never really was too big into flicking games and that's because i didn't have too many flicking games and then i got like three or four flicking games over the course of like the last five or six months and i was like whoa i really like flicking games so for me huge yay i really enjoy flicking games and i really love this game adds the uh, the unique throwing aspect of throwing the bomb so big thumbs up from me but let me know in the comments below flicking games yay or Nay. Uh, and as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.